Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, today I'm catching up on some fights that I missed. So I've been looking at the card from Macau that took place about a week ago. And I just watched the Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Hamer fight. Tor Hamer. And let me just say, I know the press is reporting this as Hamer quitting on his stool. Here's what I think you need to know. Now, going into this fight, I was a huge fan of Andy Ruiz. I thought he was obviously, in my opinion, a future heavyweight champion. Understand, you have a lot of guys in the heavyweight division who, to me, look questionable. Right? David Price, among them. Right? Other guys look like they have holes in their game that I'm not sure they can fix. Kubrat Pulev, if you take away his legs... What exactly do you have left, right? I've seen Derek Chisora in some fights. Chisora seems to have one gear. Unfortunately, at the championship level, I think you need more gears. Longtime subscribers know that I view Deontay Wilder with suspicion, right? Not only does Wilder seem to me to be just a long right hand, but Wilder also seems to be an expert at hitting you in the back of the head, right? I'm not sure if that works. So I looked at Andy Ruiz and I saw really good boxing skills. I saw very quick hands. I saw decent defense, very quick reflexes. That was of course before this fight. Let me just say this. I'm very disappointed in Andy Ruiz's performance. It was so bad that it's shocking, right? Look past the outcome, right? The other guy quit on his stool at the end of three rounds. Look past the outcome and just focus on the clean shots. And I do mean clean. That Andy Ruiz gets hit with in the first two rounds. Now, I don't know what was going on in Tor Hamer's head. But what I can tell you is I had Hamer winning the first two rounds. Folks, the fight only went three rounds. Hamer did not get knocked down. I gave Ruiz the third round. What that meant is at the time Hamer quit on his stool. I had Hamer winning the fight. <clears throat> Ruiz gets hit so flush that I have to ask myself whether he has the defensive skills to last against elite heavyweights. You know, I'm still a Ruiz fan. But let's just say I haven't seen a guy have an off night like this in quite some time. Now, I know old-timers will say that everyone has an off night from time to time. I know fans of Ali will point out that Sonny Banks actually dropped Ali early in his career. Right? Lennox Lewis fans will point out that Lennox Lewis had a couple of fights, notably the one against Ray Mercer, that were rough and tumble. Right? History seems to have forgotten these tough moments in guys' careers. But with Ruiz, what's disturbing is I saw Ruiz do nothing before getting hit. In other words, he's not hit while trying to roll with the punch. He's not hit with a hand up where the punch slips through the guard. Now this is Ruiz <clears throat> against a guy with a decent punch getting hit flush repeatedly. So let me just say this to the boxing hardcore as you think about heavyweight fights. I need to have you look at the tape of this one. Right? Officially Ruiz won the other guy quit at the end of the third round. Ruiz continues on unbeaten. My point to you, though, is why was Hamer so successful in landing flush shots on Ruiz? Let me tell you something about great chins. Great chins look good until they're dented. 
Then when they get dented, you'd be surprised how often they're dented. It's not a defensive strategy to just stand there and get hit with shots, right? Even if you're able to stay alert after getting hit with shots, sooner or later, <clears throat> the shots are going to start to have an impact, right? Sooner or later, you're going to start to get slowed down by the punishment you're taking. <clears throat> so Andy Ruiz, I don't care about whether or not his body looks sculpted. I couldn't care less because I'm just in it for the fight style, right? What's the guy actually doing? So the fact that Andy Ruiz comes in looking a little soft doesn't matter to me. What matters to me are the flush shots the guy took in the first two rounds, and I'm disappointed because Ruiz looks so good on film in prior fights. He looks so good against Joe Hanks that I really thought it was a foregone conclusion that this guy was going to be able to, when he got a shot on the Derek Chisoras of the world, hit the next level. Right now, I'm not so sure. Andy Ruiz, you're going to have to prove it to me your next fight. I don't care if you win it if I see you getting hit with shots like this, defensively challenged heavyweights, in my opinion, have a short shelf life. When Tor Hamer comes in and is able to hit you in the first round with multiple flush shots on the side of your head, then is able to follow it up in the second round and hit you with multiple flush shots, and I see you doing nothing to defend yourself, in my opinion, that raises red flags. Let me say this for Tor Hamer. In my opinion, his career is practically over. There are a lot of things that guys can come back from, right? You know, the fluke knockdown where the other guy gets a lucky punch. Okay, fine. We saw even Lennox Lewis get stopped a couple of times in his career, right? Oliver McCall, Haseem Rockman. There have been. Dominant fighters who've gotten stopped, right? Right now, Adonis Stevenson, who got stopped by Darnell Boone, is the champion at light heavyweight, right? Guys can bounce back. But the one thing I don't believe guys can bounce back from is an aversion to getting hit, right? Is a mental state where when the fight gets tough, the fighter questions whether the sport is for him. You know, it would be one thing if Tor Hamer was knocked down several times and said, hey, tonight's not my night. I've seen Warriors. Eric Morales against Manny Pacquiao hit the canvas and make a decision that that night is not their night. Right, and Morales is a big-time warrior, right? You remember the Marcos Maidana fight, which happened after the Manny Pacquiao loss. But what I haven't seen is a guy winning a fight, right? Landing flush shots. If anything should get you excited, it should be the ability to land flush shots on your opponent. If you have any belief in your punching power, you would say, hey, you know what? Maybe this guy's a better boxer than me. But I've already landed a couple of shots flush. Maybe if I just get a little bit better leverage, I can close the show. When you're landing flush shots, and in my opinion, you've won the first two rounds of the fight, how do you suddenly quit at the end of the third round without something major? Detached retina, broken bones, torn muscle, right? If you're still healthy and you're quitting, in a fight in which you've clearly won at least one round and you've landed flush shots, then to me, you don't want to be in the sport. You can come back from a lot of things, but you can't come back from apathy. Right? Tor Hamer, let's just say, I don't care who he's fighting next. It could be my next door neighbor. When I see a guy quitting like this, I can't bet on him. It's just too much risk in my opinion, right? It would be like watching the New England Patriots and then suddenly Tom Brady says, you know what? I've had enough. Football's too dangerous. 
if that happens once, and it happened already with Tor Hamer in the Glassoff fight, then you say, whoa, the red flags are flying. When it happens again, like it happened in this Ruiz fight, then you're a fool if you bet on this guy. I know we look good in prize fighter. Let's remember, prize fighter are three round fights. Sadly for him, if you're going to fight for a championship at heavyweight, you're going to have to find a way <laughs> to at least be prepared for a 12 round match. Hamer here tells his corner. By the way, this isn't even a corner saying you've had enough. No, he tells his corner, I'm done at the end of three rounds of the worst possible Andy Ruiz he could face. If Hamer prepared to fight Andy Ruiz and he entered the ring and he ended up fighting this version of Ruiz, the one getting hit repeatedly with flush shots, he should have been doing cartwheels in his head. He should have been thinking, man, you know what? He's not even on his game. I have a chance. Not, I'm looking for a way out. So to the gamblers, and I don't say this lightly, I'll just put it to you this way. I know Ruiz has a lot of talent. Whoever he's fighting, you need to stay on the sidelines for his next fight. As for Toy Hamer, you've got to be a fool if you're betting on this guy in his next fight. Why don't we at least watch a Hamer fight where he actually fights to the finish before we even think about betting on him again? Right? The guy saying, I'm done. His face is unmarked. He doesn't have blood in his eye. The doctor hasn't been over to see if he can continue the fight. As far as we know, he doesn't have an attached retina. I haven't heard about any brain injury or anything like that. I haven't heard anyone say Hamer has slurred speech. Why accept the fight? If you're going to end the fight like this, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me just say this to fight fans here online, and I'm serious about this on YouTube. You don't even need to ask me who I'm taking to the next Andrew Ruiz fight. My answer is going to be, I'm on the sidelines. As for Hamer, don't even bother wasting your time asking me. I wouldn't bet on him. Period. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.